Hey guys, Jeremy here with Simple Little Life, and uh, I've got all these small wheels for my horizontal belt grinder, and I've just kept them in that yellow bin, and it's kind of been driving me nuts lately, so I thought it was about time that I make some type of a rack, and uh, I really didn't have any idea what I was going to build, uh, just a general concept. I wanted some type of a leaning tower rack with slots so you can just slide in and out, and uh, I could just mount this rack anywhere, put on a bench or, you know, on a shelf or something like that. So I ended up going with a dimension. I cut these uh, pieces of metal. Uh, at first I went 12 inches. I never filmed it, but I actually cut them down to 11. And uh, the material I used was just a 4 inch plate by a 1 8 of an inch. I just cut those in the uh, chop saw here. And then I tried just to find a good placement for the very top wheel so I would know how narrow to make the top of the rack. And I ended up going with an inch and a quarter wide at the top. And then it tapered out to four inches, obviously, the full width of the steel at the bottom. So we're just scribing a line, and that will be our cut line. And that will kind of give this, this lean to the tower and kind of keep the weight uh, mass uh, moving towards the center rather than all on the front. Kind of like a a, a dumbbell rack or something like that. So just cut it all up in the bandsaw. And then we took the pieces over to the belt grinder. And it doesn't really show up well in the video here, but I'm actually holding both pieces at the same time just to ensure that that dimension and that, that edge on the front is exactly the same. And then we'll just deburr these pieces. And then I was sorting out the spacing. And for these wheels that I have, I decided just to do slots that are one inch apart. And so I marked those out and then I actually take a scribe and I scribe a little line there. And the reason for that is that when I went to machine these, I didn't want to have to worry about dials and, uh, you know, reading out on the mill. And it's not necessarily the proper way to use a milling machine. I mean, you've got all these great dials and different features and ways to measure on the machine itself. But sometimes it's just quicker to just to make some some marks on the steel and kind of eyeball your cuts and do it that way. So what I do here is I just touch the cutter to the edge and so I get it lined up. And uh, this is a half inch end mill I'm using. And then I went in three quarters of an inch on each one of these cuts. And for that cut, I did indeed use the, uh, the dial so that they're all in the exact same depth. And you'll also notice this clamping setup that I have. It's pretty podunk. Um, I was in a rush and I just kind of wanted to bang this thing out quickly. Um, that's definitely not the greatest way to clamp material in your milling machine. I wouldn't recommend it, but uh, I tried it for a bit and it was working. And uh, you actually noticed the, the material moved just a touch there at the end, but it ended up working all right. And then I uh, took it over to the horizontal belt grinder, cleaned all those up, deburred them. I also kind of opened up that opening, just put a little chamfer on either edge, just so as I go to place the wheels in, they would just kind of you know, guide themselves into the slot. And then I went with uh, two and a quarter inch spacing between those two side plates. And I chose that because I wanted, I wanted those plates to be quite snug with the inside of both bearings. Uh, the reason for that is that the uh, quarter inch wheel that I have actually has a shoulder, a shoulder machined onto it. And I want it to rest on the shoulder. So right as close to the bearings as possible. And so for the base, I just cut out that three eighths piece of steel and then I cut out a few pieces again of the 1 8 material at two and a quarter inches wide. And I just measured how long I need this top plate to be. Just kind of eyeballed that, marked that out, and then we'll cut that. Clean all the parts up on the belt grinder and get it ready for welding. And then we'll clamp it all in. I flushed up that bottom plate with the uh, bottom of the two side frames. Clamp that, tack it, and then once it's good, we can weld it all up. And then the next piece that we will weld is the top piece. And at this point the frame was not quite square, but I'll show you how I dealt with that in just a minute. So here's the top plate that we're going to tack on and it's fine to do this because even with this welded in place I can still move the frame side to side to square it up. And what I did here is I actually tacked it to the piece of plate underneath 
And then if you notice, I take my vice grip and I clamp one of the foot pads to the plate and one to the actual rack. And that just allows me to clamp it and bend it over to square. And then when I weld that back piece in, that will hold that nice and square. So a really quick, easy way to square stuff up. Um, you know, if you just tack it to a work plate and then, and then you can use that work plate as a brace to pull against. And then we'll clean everything up on the bottom with the belt grinder. And I'll do a little profiling kind of around some of the edges. I'll give it a bit of a more finished look rather than just sharp hard edges everywhere. I started with a 36 grit belt as a ceramic belt. And then we went up to a 120. I didn't go really crazy on the surface finish. There's no real need for this, but got it cleaned up. It sits nice and square and flat. I think it looks pretty good. And one thing that I, I don't do often enough is actually paint the stuff that I make. And uh, it's nice and warm in the shop still at night. So I thought, you know what, I may as well throw a coat of paint on there and make it look a little better. For this, I'm just using a flat black. And I just did one coat. I figured it'd be enough. Seeing as this isn't gonna be outside at all, I just, more just for aesthetics that I wanted it painted, so. Give that a quick paint. And uh, I want to finish this off. This was a really short project, only took a, a few hours, but it was getting later on in the evening, I wanted to get finished with it, so I kind of helped the drying process along with some compressed air. Uh, probably better just to let the paint air dry, but like I said, I was kind of in a rush here. So just blow that off, and then, uh, you know what, I figure we may as well go ahead and uh, put a stencil on there. So I just have these simple little life stencils. I've got a few sizes of them. Uh, I had laser cut and uh, just hit it with a little bit of, uh, I think that's coyote brown or desert tan or something like that. Just some random paint I had laying around. And there she is, all finished up. And we can load it all in there. Works really well and it's nice to actually have all of my, uh, my wheels organized and easy to access. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Cheers.